Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you if you haven't subscribed to the channel to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you all of our content. So today I'm really excited because I'm gonna introduce you to a product called Lito. So this is a product that I have that I wanna review today. Not only review, but actually show you how to get started with Unity. And why would you use this for AR, you might ask. And the reason why I want to talk about it is because I've been using it for the last couple of days. So you have seen me do prototypes on augmented reality where we do selection of items, we do dragging of items, we basically place TVs on the wall. So all of that has been done with my fingers. Basically I'm holding my phone and I'm touching on the screen and I'm doing touch gestures to be able to move objects around. So imagine if you had a remote control where you can actually interact with objects and that's what this is. It allows you to interact with objects in the real world. And I really enjoy using it. I was, I basically created, created a demo where I had a basic cube right in front of me and I, I was dragging the cube, I was move, moving it to left, to right, I was lifting it up and then I added a taco, I added a pizza, I added a couple more items in my area and I was basically moving them around. And just something as simple as that actually gives you, this gives you a lot of control. So. Let's say that I want to select an item. All I have to do is basically point to the item. I can use the button that is on the button to select an item. So if I hold it, the item is basically getting dragged. So if I move my hand to the right, it's going to drag it to the right. If I move it to the left, it's going to drag it to the left. If I want to bring the object close to me, all I have to do is a motion, which is going to be like this, or a motion that is going to be like that to bring it far out. So. This little device is really powerful. They are in beta, so I'm not gonna tell you that it's perfect. They are working a lot of bugs out, but I wanna show you what it does, how it works. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you how to get set up with Lito. And I'm gonna go through the documentation of Lito because I would be lying if I tell you that I remember the steps that I followed to, to get the project going. So we're gonna go through the documentation, follow, their instructions and we're going to create a project and at the end I'll show you some of the examples that I was able to create with the features that they provide in their Unity package. So the first thing that I'm going to do is if you want to do or read anything about these, make sure that you let them know, send them an email and the repository that I'm going to be looking at is for documentation only. It's github.com specializer AR Lito Docs. So go through that, their email is in there. So if you have questions, you can probably email them and I'm sure they're gonna be able to help you out. Or if you're curious about when this is coming, then just ask them about more information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the documentation. Also, if you wanna check them out, here's their website. And by all means, I'm not sponsored by them. I just like their, their device, they send it to me. And I just really, I really enjoy using it. So that's why I am giving you their information so they're not a sponsor whatsoever this is just me just telling them thank you for the device and that i enjoy the lead though very much so anyway so here's their website and also here's the documentation so we're going to go through this documentation and at the end i'll show you what you would expect so the first thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you have unity version 2018.1.6 when i was starting out i was using the latest version and I wasn't, I wasn't really confident about it and I, and I didn't actually try it. So I ended up just installing this one specifically, just like they say, because that's the version that they've been testing with. So you wanna make sure that you, you have that one. So if you don't have the Unity Hub, I completely recommend that you do install that. So that way you can have you know a single entry where you can manage multiple instances of Unity in just one with one application. So this version, I already installed it. If you need to know how to do that, all you have to do is basically go to the Unity Hub and then Installs. And if you want to add a new install, just click on Add and then search for that instance. As you can see, I have that one already, which is Unity 2018.1.6. Another way, like if you don't see it here under Installs and Add, go to the go to Unity.com under Downloads, and you're gonna be able to find it there as well. And it'll add it to Unity Hub if you don't have it already. So now that I have that installed, then the other thing that we need to make sure is we we want to make sure that we have the iOS build support. As you can see, I have iOS. And if you don't have it installed, don't worry because all you have to do is just click on those three dots, add modules, 
and then once you click on that you can basically check the modules that you're missing in this case it's ios build support which i already have installed so i don't need to do that part awesome so the next step is on the project screen use the drop down menu next to the new button to create a new 3d project so that's what we're going to be doing we're going to create a new project so i'm going to click on add and it's going to tell us and that's not the app that i want to click on i want to go to projects just like the instructions indicated and we're going to click on new and this is going to try to install basically to create a project with that version let me make sure that i click on new and then click on the drop down and then you're going to tell it which version you're going to use so as you can see i have the latest here I have this other one and I have the one that Lito recommended that we use. So I'm going to select that one. And then they're going to tell you that you need to select a 3D project. So that's what we're going to do. Let me go back to that. And this one's just going to be Lito, Lito Hello World. We're going to call it that since everything starts with Hello World. And then I'm just going to click on Create. And for the most part, it's basically configuration and making sure that we have everything set up correctly in Unity. And then we just bring in their package and then we pretty much are done. And then, you know, after that, it's just a matter of, okay, what do you want to incorporate? What do you want to use the input controller that Lito offers to, you know, for your experience? Like I've been creating multiple experiences. So there's a couple ideas that I have on things that I want to do. So you might have the same questions on the things that you're doing. If you already have an AR experience, you think about, if you already have an AR experience, you think about what can you do to you know extend that experience so how can you incorporate this device into your experience because you know you want to provide the best experience to your user and if it, if lito is one of those use cases that works with your experience then i would recommend that you use them all right so it looks like this is almost done it's importing assets so the next thing that we need to do let me just put this aside so that we can read through the instructions is we're going to go we're going to go to the player options and then ios other settings so let me go back to that and looks like it's loading no i don't need to install the latest version thank you unity and we're basically going to go and select the runtime which is for that x we're going to tell the camera you said so this is something common to ar if you're using ios ar specifically you want to make sure you populate that field because that is what's going to prompt the the device to allow the application access to the camera for augmented reality experiences if you don't have that it's not going to work Okay, so let me go back into Unity and go to Build Settings. And okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to Player Settings. Let's close out of this. Then I'm just gonna basically snap that into here. And I think everything else looks good there. And make sure that you select the iOS one, Other Settings. And they indicated to basically select uh, the script, scripting ROM type version was so scripting runtime, yep, for that X, and I already have for that X, so I don't need to worry about that. And then the camera usage description, you want to populate that. And that can be just anything that you want that to be. Just know that that's what the user might see when they get the pop-up. And then we want to make sure that the minimum target is 12.2. So we're gonna use that as the minimum target on our iOS version, okay? That looks good and then we do want to require error key so let's go ahead and find that option somewhere here and that's where that is so i'm just i'm basically hitting command s so if you're on a mac if you're on windows control s so that i don't i don't lose any changes okay so we have this part all done and and they nicely indicated you know the things that you need to change or check for so that's all cool and then this part is really important because if you don't have the right version things might not work so what we're gonna do is we're going to basically open up the package manager and we're gonna search for, if you notice, ARKit XR plugin, and which is version, let's see, version 2.2.0. So that's what we're gonna install first. Let's go to that and then go to window, package manager. And you can go into advanced just to show previous packages just in case it doesn't show up. And then let's give it a second here. And I'm just gonna type in AR air kit so that we can see everything and then if you remember the option that they are asking for is to that one that zero so let's make sure that we install the option so click on see all versions and then to that one that zero and then preview that five make sure that you don't select the other one because they have the same versioning name all right i think that looks good i'm going to hit install and click the arrow next to air foundation to select i think this is a typo here 
and or that might be something that we need you know what i think that's what we need as well i'm so used to having air foundation as part of my install so let's make sure that we install that as well so let's go ahead and let's go back and see what the status is and it looks like it's still installing because it's not opening there we go so it's installing and then so once we have that plugin installed you can see that it show up a new option there let's go ahead and install air foundation and AR Foundation, and you can see that they indicated to use 2.2.0, so that's what we're going to install, 2.2.0, and they don't say which preview version to use, so I'm going to go with, let me make sure, 2.2.0, I'm going to go with the highest preview, so it's going to be preview that 3, and yep, I think that looks good, and then I'm just going to hit install. And I'll check a project that I already did just to make sure that that's accurate. And in fact, let me go to that just to make sure because I don't want you to do that and then things don't work. So I'm just going to go here under Code, Unity, and then I'm going to open up the Litho Essentials, which is the project that I did previously to this, to make sure that things were going to work. So I want to make sure that you have the right packages before I tell you. And, and this is just a... Uh, okay, there we go. Let me open this up. And let me go back here and I'm going to go into packages and manifest. And I want to look for AR foundation. So 220 preview that three. So I can basically minimize this, which I think that's the one that we, yep, and that's the one that we installed. So, so as I indicated, that was correct. Okay, so we have this part done. So the next thing that I want to show you is the import the, the Litho Unity package into your Unity project. And that is something that you're gonna need to get basically, you know, permissions for. They are in beta, so they will be sending you that as part of a package if you get accepted. So just make sure that you get that package. I'm going to look for that. I believe I have under I have that under downloads, and then also with all my prototypes that I've been creating. So let me make sure that I have. So this is example master, and I have the beta version here. Okay, let me just double click on that. And that's going to be basically a package. It's going to tell you, okay, here's a Litho beta package with a date and a version, and then everything that they created for you, which is actually a lot. I was surprised with how much functionality was there already. So now that you have that, you can hit import, and it's going to import that folder on, under your assets. Okay, so let's just go ahead and look at the instructions as that happens. So I think we did that. We did that. Awesome. And then, of course, we have to enable the basically the game to be an iOS game. And then they're recommending that you do the iPhone X XS. That's the one that I normally use anyways. So there we go. So that, now that that is imported, you can see that everything is under Litho now. Does our core, materials, prefab scenes, and, and various examples. So before we look at that, let's keep on looking at the making some changes as they request it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to iOS. And if you notice, you want to make sure you don't have anything set in here, no Steam, Link, Unity Libraries, no Development Build. Everything is going to be released, later version, and that's it. And you're going to click on Switch Platform. And that's going to change everything to be iOS. And then we'll change, as we do change this to iOS, we're going to see that we now have that all the iPhone resolutions and iPads and so on under the game screen. So let's wait until that is done. And I'm just going to go back to the instructions. So we'll do that, and then we'll do this as well. And then ensure the scale slider is set to the lowest possible value. And that's normally what I do. Otherwise, you're going to be zooming in, and you won't be able to see the experience that well. OK, so it looks like we got everything there already set up. Let me go into the game. So we're already in the game. So this is what, I, what it'll show once you have the iOS build selected and actually change. So the one that we're going to use is Portray, so make sure you have that. And the instructions, they say, make sure the slider is all the way low. And that's because you don't want to start like this because you won't be able to see the whole thing. You want to start all the way down so that you can see the entire, basically what will show in your device. OK, so that looks good. And I think that's actually most of, most of everything that you have to do. So the next thing is just basically, you know, guide to using Litho, setting up the Litho project, which we did. And then they explain to you how the Lito demo scene works. I already ran it, so I know how it works. So I'm not gonna worry about I'm not gonna worry about that. So I'm just gonna tell you where that is so that you can run it as well on your device. 
So if you want to run their demo, all you have to do is just expand the Lito folder, then expand the core, go into scenes, and then double click on Lito example. And then when you double click on Lito example, it's going to open up this like this. And I think we're good if I, I had some errors. I think that's just because I open it right up and let me, let me just hit play, make sure everything looks good. And yep, I'm going to get a couple of warnings because I'm using the new Mac OS Catalina and it sucks because it gives you a lot of, there's just a lot of permission issues that I've been having. And I think that's why some of these problems occur. But let me show you, yeah, I know Catalina. So this is basically their demo scene. I'm gonna show you a couple of components in here and then we'll look and see how it looks when I ran some of the examples on the device. Okay, so of course you're gonna have a canvas just like you see here. This is all built into a canvas. And uh, one thing that I had to do on my demo, just make sure you do it as well. If you're running this on an iPhone X, you have rounder corners and it's really hard to click on the X and also really hard to click on the menu. So what I ended up doing is I went into the scene and then change the 2D. And this is something that I was gonna send the, the Lito team uh, basically a message for, because this is actually impossible to click on that X unless you move it down. But because most of you are developers, you should be able to do this. And all you have to do is just basically move that, basically move that option down and it's gonna be the toggle button. So when they, what, what I ended up doing is I didn't just move that, I actually moved both because I wanted the logo to show up on my demos. So you move that down a little bit more and then we can actually move this component down as well, which is gonna be part of the tab view. And we can just move that down a tiny bit more. So that's what I ended up doing and everything looked great and it functioned properly. So, because like I was saying, the iPhone XS is, is gonna give you a rounder corner here and it's actually almost covering that. So it's really, really hard to actually click on the X. So now that you have that going, all you really have to do is go to File, Build Settings, and then click on Add Op Open Scenes, build it and run it, and then you can look at uh, the results on your device. But I wanted to show you a couple more things before we wrap it up. So everything in here is using AR Foundation, and you know that I've been doing videos on AR Foundation. So if you're not familiar with the AR Session Origin, or if you're not familiar with the AR Camera, make sure that you watch some of the videos that I posted on AR Foundation because I go through that process from the very beginning. So the other things that you want to keep in mind is that they have two components that are that are kind of like the key components in here. So one of them is going to be this interactable object. So this is going to be any object that you want to interact with. So let's say that you wanted to inter you want this object to be grabbable. Let's say that this was a cube, and in fact they already have a cube right here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So here's our ground and I'm going to see if I can find that cube. I think that cube might be creating, it might be created, oh, actually here, it's right here. And if we go, I was thinking, I was gonna say, this is probably something that gets created dynamically, but it's not, it's actually the demo, it's actually this object. So anything that you wanna interact with, let's say that you want to add something else, and it's a model that you have, all you really have to do is make sure that it has you know, a box collider because you want that to collide with a surface or some, some kind of collision. You want to have a rigid body because you want to, in my case, I want the, I wanted this to function as something, you know, will function in real life. If I was dropping a cube, if I was, you know, so make sure that you have that for physics. And then the other component that you'll add is the interactable object. So this is Lito implementation that it's going to allow you to interact with this object with the controller. So if you want this object to be grabbable, meaning that you can grab it, then you gotta check that. If you want this object to be movable, make sure that you can actually move it around the scene so you wanna check that. If not, you can uncheck it. The same thing with the grabbable option. And then the other thing that I didn't want to happen with another demo that I ran, I didn't want it to, I, want, I didn't want my objects to be rotating because they say that you have a house that you wanna move around. You don't want the house to be rotating as you're dragging this object because it's really not gonna look realistic. So that's why this option is there for if you wanna constrain that to not be rotatable, then you wanna uncheck it. If you want something to be rotating, maybe it's a ball that you have or, or some other object that you wanna rotate as you move it around, then you wanna check that. And then they have some other options that I honestly haven't really checked. I, I know that this one is, you know, if you're hovering over an item, you can change the material. If you're basically, you know, exiting, exiting out, then there's a neutral material. 
and then a selected material when you're selecting an item, and also the on pointer on release. So these are basically materials that are going to be displayed based on the based based on the experience, based on the selection. If you have something selected, it'll show you a specific material if it's deselected. So you can you can change that implementation. This is just a demo that they have. What I like about the demos as well is that they they you can change the code. So you can look at the code. If I wanted to look at how that worked, and that's in fact some of the things that I did because I, I was curious, you have the entire implementation here of how it works, how they're, you know, how they're capturing some of the Unity events, how they're getting reference to some of the materials. So you have access to, to that part of the code. And then the other thing that I also wanted to show you is the demo event object. So if I go in here into, this is another object that also you have access to. So if you want to keep a, basically track of the state, so let's say that your Lito is not connected, this, is, this event is not going to get executed. But if you want it, you're, you know, you wanted to track when something is connected so that you can start your experience, then you can basically add a binding to this event. You can also say, okay, if the, for whatever reason, you couldn't connect to the controller, you can bind to that or on controller disconnected. So there's some options in here that you can look at that they provide on their demo that are really, really helpful. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you as far as Unity. Then the next thing that I wanted to show you is some of the experience that I that I was able to create. And one of them was just basically running these demos. So I'm going to go into Twitter and show you one of those. So this one right here, let me just go ahead and get it started. This one right here is just a demo that they have. And the controller is connected. I have a cube on the screen, which is the one that I show you. You can see how the material is changing. You can see how I can bring the cube in. I told you in the beginning of this video, by rotating the controller, you can actually basically bring objects to you and also far away from you so that's basically what i'm doing here i'm just experimenting i i can also do if i hold the if i press the button that is under the control and i can basically move my hand up and down and it'll basically bring it into the air which is what you're seeing in some of these areas so that was one experience that i that i was building then i i decided to download a couple assets from synthi studios and there i'm really grateful that they help me with you know with assets and, and this one is really cool because I had a hamburger not a hamburger a hot dog a pizza and also a, no, a noodles and I wanted to see how to, how they would interact in the in AR and you can see that at some point here I have a flying pizza let me see if I can find that and it might be in another video but the idea is that I'm basically just moving in this video I'm basically throwing things I wanted to see how that would work oh this is the move the flying pizza and I say, my dream came true, I just got a flying pizza, hey, hey. And it actually, it actually feels like a flying pizza, you'll see. I'm gonna pick up the pizza here, and it's actually flying, and it's like, it feels like it's floating. And honestly, I, I couldn't have done this without the control, because it wouldn't have looked that realistic. And that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about, you know, anything that I show you about, you know, getting access to the beta, make sure that you send them an email and ask for you know ask for that and, and give them a reason to give you better access because i think at the end of the day you want to build an experience and you want to also you know incorporate their device but also make sure that you have an idea in place before you ask for better access so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just show you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for developers also find me in patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.